excited. I know. How's your school, son? It's okay, Dad, but I have a little problem. What was that, son? We have an assignment about frequency distribution, Dad. And I don't have yet any idea about it. Wait, did you just say frequency distribution? We, we got, got you, boy! We will teach you frequency distribution, so let's go to the video. Hi, guys! Welcome to our video. So, for today's video, we will be discussing about frequency distribution. And this is mathematics in the modern world. So, what is frequency distribution? It describes the number of observations for each possible value of a variable. Frequency distributions are depicted using graphs and frequency tables. The frequency of a value is the number of times it occurs in a dataset. A frequency distribution is the pattern of frequencies of a variable. Frequency distribution have four types. The first one is ungroup frequency distribution. It is the number of observations of each value of a variable. You can use this type of frequency distribution for categorical variables. The second type is group frequency distribution. It is the number of observation of each class interval of a variable. Class intervals are the ordered groupings of a variable's values. The third type is relative frequency distribution. It is the proportion of observations of each value or class interval of a variable. You can use this type of frequency distribution for any type of variable when you are more interested in comparing frequencies than the actual number of observations. The last type is cumulative frequency distributions. It is the sum of the frequencies less than or equal to each value or class interval of a variable. You can use this type of frequency distribution for ordinal or quantitative variables when you want to understand how often observations fall below certain values. Next is how to make a frequency table. Frequency distributions are often displayed using frequency tables. A frequency table is an effective way to summarize or organize a data set. It is usually composed of two columns, the values or class intervals and their frequencies. The method for making a frequency table differs between the four types of frequency distributions. You can follow the guides or example below or use software such as Excel, SPSS, or R to make a frequency table. So moving on to the next part, how to make an ungroup frequency table. First is you must create a table with two columns and as many rows as there are values of the variable. Label the first column using the variable name and label the second column frequency. Enter the values in the first column. For ordinal variables, the values should be ordered from smallest to largest in the table rows. For nominal variables, the values can be in any order in the table. You may wish to order them alphabetically or in some other logical order. Second step is count the frequencies. The frequencies are the number of times each value occurs. Enter the frequencies in the second column of the table beside their corresponding values. Especially if your dataset is large, it may help to count the frequencies by tallying. Add a third column called tally. As you read the observations, make a tick mark in the appropriate row of the tally column for each observation. Count the tally marks to determine the frequency. We have here an example of an ungrouped frequency table. A gardener set up a bird feeder in their backyard. To help them decide how much and what type of bird seed to buy, they decide to record the bird species that visit their feeder. Over the course of one morning, the following birds visit their feeder. As you can see in the table, there are six bird species, namely 
Finch, Dove, Chickadee, Gackle, Sparrow, and Starling. Beside its name, it has the corresponding tally and frequency. For Finch, it has a tally of 4, so the frequency is 4. For Dove, 1, Chickadee, 3, Gackle, 2, Sparrow, 4, and Starling, 2. Okay, next is how to make a group frequency table. First is divide the variable into class intervals. Later on, we will see the method on how to divide a variable into class intervals. Different method will give different answers. But there is no agreement on the best method to calculate class intervals. Calculate the range. Subtract the lowest value in the dataset from the highest. Decide the class interval width. There are no firm rules on how to choose the width. But the following formula is a rule of thumb. So here we see the one method to divide a variable into class intervals. Width is equals to range over the square root of the sample size. You can round this value to a whole number or a number that's convenient to add, such as a multiple of 10. Calculate the class intervals. Each interval is defined by a lower limit and upper limit. Observations in a class interval are greater than or equal to the lower limit and less than the upper limit. Second step in making a group frequency table is create a table with two columns and as many rows as there are class intervals. Label the first column using the variable name and label the second column frequency. Enter the class intervals in the first column. Third step is count the frequencies. The frequencies are the number of observation in each class interval. You can count by tallying if you find it helpful. Enter the frequencies in the second column of the table beside the corresponding class intervals. So here, we have an example of group frequency table. A sociologist conducted a survey of 20 adults. She wants to report the frequency distribution of the ages of the survey respondents. So here we can see the different ages of the respondents. So in order for us to make it more easier, we need to arrange the ages in ascending order. Next is we need to find the highest and the lowest number. We have 63 as the highest and 19 as the lowest. Next is to find the range, we need to subtract the highest number to the lowest number. So 63 minus 19 is equals to 44. And we need to find the class interval. To find the class interval, we will just simply divide the range over the square root of the sample size. Our range here is 44 and our sample size is 20 because there are 20 respondents. So by using our calculator, 44 divided by the square root of 20 is 9.84. And we just simply round the class interval with 210. So this is our class intervals. So we have here the group frequency table of the ages of the survey participants. For the age greater than or equal to 19 and less than 29, we have 4 frequency. For the age that is greater than or equal to 29 and less than 39, we have 9 frequency. Next, the age that is greater than or equal to 39 and less than 49, we have 3. And age that is greater than or equal to 49 and less than 59, we have 3. And lastly, Age that is greater than or equal to 59 and less than 69, we have 1. Next is how to make a relative frequency table. You'll just need to create an ungroup or group frequency table. Add a third column to the table for the relative frequencies. To calculate the relative frequencies, divide each frequency by the sample size. The sample size is the sum of the frequencies. Here, we can see an example of a relative frequency table. As you can see, this table is the same with ungrouped frequency table. 
But here we just need to calculate the relative frequency. In calculating that, we just need to divide each frequency by the sample size. In finding the sample size, we will just add all the frequency. So our sample size here is 16. 3 plus 1 plus 4 plus 2 plus 4 plus 2 is equal to 16. For chicka D, 3 divided 16 is equal to 0.19. For dab, 1 divided 16 is equal to 0 0.06. For pinch, 4 divided 16 is equal to 0.25. For gackal, 2 divided 16 is equal to 0.13. For sparrow, 4 divided 16 is equal to 0.25. For starling, 2 divided 16 is equal to 0.13. So from the table, the gardener can make observations such as that 90% of the bird feeder visits were from chickadees and 25% were from pinches. Next is how to make a cumulative frequency table. First, Create an ungroup or group frequency table for an ordinal or quantitative variable. Cumulative frequencies don't make sense for nominal variables because the values have no order. One value isn't more than or less than another value. Second, add a third column to the table for the cumulative frequencies. The cumulative frequency is the number of observations less than or equal to a certain value or class interval. To calculate the relative frequencies, Add each frequency to the frequencies in the previous rows. Third, optional only, if you want to calculate the cumulative relative frequency, add another column to divide each cumulative frequency by the sample size. Here we have an example of cumulative frequency table. As you can see, it is the same as group frequency table. But here we just need to calculate the cumulative frequency and the cumulative relative frequency. In calculating the cumulative frequency, we just need to add each frequency to the frequencies in the previous rows. For first row, we have a cumulative frequency of 4 because it is the first row. In the second row, 9 plus 4 is equal to 13. In the third row, 3 plus 9 plus 4 is equal to 16. In the fourth row, we have 3 plus 3 plus 9 plus 4 is equal to 19. And lastly, 1 plus 3 plus 3 plus 9 plus 4 is equal to 20. So next is, in getting the cumulative relative frequency, we will just need to divide each cumulative frequency by the sample size. So in getting the sample size, we will just simply add all the frequency. 4 plus 9 plus 3 plus 3 plus 1 is equal to 20. So 20 is our sample size. So, in the first row, it has a cumulative frequency of 4, so 4 divided 20 is equal to 0.2. 13 divided 20 is equal to 0.65. 16 divided 20 is equal to 0.8. 19 divided 20 is equal to 0.95. And lastly, 20 divided 20 is equal to 1. So, from this table, the sociologist can make observations such as 13 respondents or 65% were under 39 years old and 16 respondents or 80% were under 49 years old. And that's all. That's the end of our topic. And I hope you learned something about our discussion. God bless. Thank you for watching.